Stay tuned for the final well, presentation from Sprout 20 103.7 KFO. Well, the only edition online on KOFO.com edition of the Prime Time Grill. Get your show. KOFO is your sports source yeah. for East Central you know, Kansas and home of all the awesome sports. And tonight, we welcome you to the Kent Kessinger Show, live from Primetime Grill at Fusion Alley in South Ottawa. You can join us live at Primetime Grill during the show and enjoy a delicious Kansas cuisine while we share some time with OU Braves head football coach, Kent Kessinger. Tonight's show is brought to you by Primetime Grill, 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive in South Ottawa, and by Ottawa University. Now, live from Primetime Grill, Here's your host, okay, Rob Jackson. And I'm in the middle of the heart of myself today. And I'm trying to, I want this to be just as good as the live on the air for everybody. Because we have, we have a more wide audience on the web. Yeah. So we're actually probably reaching more people. Could be. Very well could be. And I was joining us and speaking right there. To my left, if you were here or might be to your right if you're staring at us, is that kind of thing? Here the Ottawa University Braves. Yeah. I'm looking at the one of the counterpoint. We have the coordinators, offensive coordinator Julian Mendez, defensive coordinator Nick Davis. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having us. We always appreciate you having us, Bob. Well, I'm happy to have everybody here. We're going to make this like old school CNN crossfire back in the day, where except, except we're just, it probably won't be political. We'll just do football. How about that? Good. I chose this side so I didn't have a blind in mic. What we need to do is before each show is flip a coin and decide that way. It would defer. Yeah. It would defer. Yeah. Like defer to the show. second half of the show. Yeah, or just defer to the other side without the light. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Which way would you like to kick? To kick with the light, yeah. not against it. So maybe we'll have to influence. Maybe we'll influence that next week. You never know. It's, uh, as you know, we're on the internet tonight, Auto University, Braves Volleyball on the air right now on 1220 and 103.7 FM, KOFO and KOFO.com. And it's uh, coming in again uh, after another rough week, but some positives, though. I think there were, there were some positives coming out of that, uh, out of the game on Saturday. And I want to start with Coach Mendez offensively. Talk about some of the positives that you were able to see on film that maybe people weren't able to to catch. Um, we are, we'll start with our first drive. We were able to string a drive together, ended up being 13 plays, um, and, and get started in some sort of way. We end with a again a fourth and one, but we were able to get a good drive together, kind of start with what we wanted to be able to do, um, get ourselves into a good spot, um, and then our next drive we come out and we start backed up. Um, and drive it from being backed up. Normally our goal is to, to get two first downs, kind of get ourselves going, flip the field, and we were able to get a couple first downs, string those together, um, and get ourselves kind of in a, in a spot to do something. Um, also, quarterback play, Dakota Lynn was able to put some things together, put in a with what he can do with the ball, running the ball, um, and, and, and in good spots, and then Lachlan Poor was able to have two great touchdown passes. So. You're able to see a little bit there, James Reader being able to run the ball pretty well, having some big plays, and little glimpses up front of some positivity. Um, and now it's just being able to string that together uh, into four quarters. Coach Davis, how about you on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, I think we had the best game in terms of our assignment. We had the guys in the right spots pretty much the whole entire afternoon. It's just now – making those plays. In the second half, we made some plays. In the first half, we were right there and just missed it. So I think the positive is the kids bought in a little bit to what we were going to do, and they were in a good situation. They just need to finish at that point of attack for that tackle. Or Man, we were third and 24, and we knew the play was coming. Our DB was in a good position. He just You get interceptions, feel really good about that drive, or he knocked it out. But that kid made a great catch, so... We were in great, great positions all night. We just got to get the kids to make those plays when they're in those positions and get some confidence. Hey, Coach, Ken Kessinger, how about you uh, when it comes to positives from Saturday? Well, I, I think our kids responded, you know, in the second half a much better. You know, we, I thought we played better in the second half. Like, you know, I mentioned after the game is that I think that they, they, they – it wasn't that they were taking chances, but they weren't hesitant. They weren't hesitant. 
know um, whether it was defensively going and attacking the ball um, within the scheme that we were running to stop the triple, or if it was offensively, it was being able to protect the quarterback a little bit better um, than we did in the first half. You know, and so those, those things I think are I think that we can build upon um, as we go into the, this next week. With that said, we saw the positives, uh, and I want to go back to the defense for a second, forcing some turnovers uh, in, in that ball game, especially in the second half. Uh, it felt like that maybe some confidence really starting to build with, with that defensive squad. Yeah, guys were running around and making some great plays, and uh, there was some excitement you know, for the first time really all season as we watched the film. We watched really all of our good plays, which was over, you know, 60% of the plays were actually really good plays for us. And we're watching that film, and there was really about four plays where kids actually got excited about making plays. And I showed them and said, all 30 of these plays, we should be excited about one-yard gains, a two-yard gain, a zero-yard gain. And we got to play with that kind of emotion because those things then spread them all over. You shouldn't only flip on the film and only get excited about four plays, which are takeaways. Every play you stop a, an opponent, you can get excited with your guys. So I think we got to just be more excited about playing football. Coach Mendez, offensively, could you feel maybe the emotions uh, of the players starting to pick up a little bit along with some confidence? Yeah, I mean, once once you start to see some good plays or sustaining a drive, you can start feeling, okay, you know, hey, we've been in a, in a tough situation, but we can do this. We can do this part. We can put together a drive. We can stick with it. Up. Um, and that was something that we tried to give, you know, at each film session we want to give some positive things that you're going to correct and want to work on, but then also some highlights on things, that come, whether it's effort plays or, or things that really worked into what our scheme was. But you were able to see some of that. Coach uh, Kessinger, we, I, I believe we may, may have mentioned this. Might have been in post game, might have been in pre game. It could have been off the air at one uh, during the season. Uh, and there's a feeling that maybe the that split season really did more harm than good when it comes to players, as far as uh, maybe being a little bit worn out and not being as fresh as they would be at the time. Would you agree with that? And do you think that that is playing a role in, uh, in maybe that excitement or the the emotion, maybe it's not being there like it normally would be? You know, I I, I think that that has a definite uh, a definite possibility for sure. I mean, and I, today we're getting set up this next week. We have a junior varsity game against uh, Baker University, and and so I was talking to uh, Coach Thorne up there and and just kind of seeing how it's going, you know, with them as well, and one of the, the same things that, that we've been talking about, he said even with those guys, is that, you know, in the summer, they, you know, they didn't have as many guys, you know, that were participating that they've had in the past. Um, you know, I think our guys took a little bit more time off, you know, in the summertime than they would have normally had because they had to recuperate from a, a longer a longer season. I mean, there was good that we got more reps, but it was also bad that we got more reps in the spring. We just didn't have that downtime, and the downtime that we took was in the summertime, and that's usually where we're building up in to be able to get into the fall. And, you know, I think that that's playing a role with us right now is that, uh, you know, it's just that time to get back in the rhythm because they just got done playing football, and now they're starting it up again, you know, and, it, and it's one of those things that, it can be kind of wearing on you. That's why you look in the NFL. Um, rookies usually start off pretty good at the beginning of the season, but once they get toward the end of the season, you all, all of a sudden see these rookies starting to fall off and fall off and fall off because they're used to a 12-game schedule that usually gets done, you know, for most of them usually gets done in November. Some of them will play maybe in a bowl game or something like that, but they don't practice as much in bowl games. These the teams that are practicing mostly in the Division One are going to be the four teams that are in the playoff, um, and that goes into January, yes, you know, time. But but they're usually done in January. You watch these NFL guys; you know, they're not done playing the Super Bowl until February. And you can see that this uh, the drain puts on. Well, we're getting a little bit of that because of the length of the schedule. Does that lead to more injuries? Possibly? 
it sure it sure can. Um, we try to do as much stuff as we can to limit that. Well, you know, we're uh, we're still trying to pretty, be pretty strong in the weight room with um, with Coach Adams does a really good job of having a, having a fairly good um, kind of maintenance program for our guys over the over the fall. So we you know we're not just cutting out that we're still trying to develop, um, but uh, but you can see it definitely at times to wear on. Here. We're going to take our first break of the night right here. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the Braves. Actually, we're going to kind of pick the coaches' brains and talk about what it's like to, uh, as you begin the, the prep work for game week and, and, and what everybody goes through, offensively, defensively, and head coach-wise. We're going to do that when we come back. Don't forget, we're here to the top of the hour at Primetime Grill, 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive in South Ottawa. It is Pancho Super Cheese and Super Chili and Cheese Burrito Night. But if you're not into that, if that's not your thing, they have appetizers, salads, burgers, sandwiches, and all kinds of good stuff here at Primetime Grill. You're listening to the Ken Kessinger Show on KOFO.com. It's the perfect combination of food, fun, and football. The Kent Kessinger Show, Tuesday nights at Primetime Grill. And that combination just got even better because now you can enjoy the show while you enjoy a blast from the past. Poncho Super Cheese or Super Chili and Cheese Burrito. That's right, Poncho Super Cheese or Super Chili and Cheese Burritos are back. And they're only at Primetime Grill on Tuesdays. Enjoy all of your other menu favorites, the full-service bar, and more at Primetime Grill, 2204 South Princeton Circle Drive. For game time and Poncho's Burritos, it's Primetime. Ottawa University has positioned itself as a distinctive and rapidly expanding institution. Known for its innovative educational models, exceptional value, and special ability to prepare diverse student populations for lifetimes of enlightened faith, exemplary service, inspired leadership, and personal significance. With numerous undergraduate and graduate degrees in business, education, arts and sciences, athletics, and more, you'll gain the specific expertise you need for a lifetime of significance and prosperity. Find out more by visiting ottawa.edu slash O-U-K-S. Today's job market is full of demand for skilled trade workers. Electricians, welders, mechanics, these and other trades are the backbone of every community. They're also a huge part in making sure the Army National Guard is always fulfilling its mission of service to our country and communities. Soldiers train to keep the power flowing, engines running, and supplies moving. The skilled trades these soldiers perform are the same ones needed in today's civilian workforce. Army National Guard soldiers are on the fast track to learning skills that can set them up for success at home with companies looking to hire the best. With options from plumber to helicopter mechanic and everything in between, soldiers are able to select the trades that best fit their lives. Their resumes are being built through their paid training and part-time service. Find out how you too can learn a trade profession and serve your community and country by visiting NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Kansas Army National Guard. Aired by the Kansas Association of Broadcasters and this station. Franklin County Emergency Communications Center, Franklin County Sheriff's Office, Ottawa Police Department, and Wellsville Police Department would like to invite you to protect yourself from scams and fraud. No law enforcement agency or government entity will ever call to tell you that you have a warrant. No legitimate business or government entity will accept gift cards as payment for anything including fees, bonds, or taxes. Consider it a scam if someone you don't know is asking you to purchase a gift card and never give out any personal information. When it comes to being scammed, it is only appropriate to call law enforcement to report when you have lost property, money, or your identity has been stolen. Don't underestimate what scammers will do and say to you in order to get your information or money. When making online purchases, use caution, even when using trusted buyers or sellers. Use public parking lots or highly visible locations to exchange goods and use verified secure digital currency exchanges. Protect personal information. The identity saved could be your own. Brought to you by the Franklin County Emergency Communications Center and KOFO Radio. I'm Bob Johnson, and as always, joining us is head coach Ken Kessinger of the Ottawa University Braves. Along with offensive coordinator Julian Mendez, defensive coordinator Nick Davis, and as we uh, went to break, does everyone play their own roles in, in preparing for a game? So I want to start with you, coach. 
walk me through what it's like you know, when you get start to get ready for game week. So that game ends, kind of walk me through the process of what you need to start prepping for the next week's game. Well, um, you know, generally what we do is, is depending on whether we're at home or away, um, you know, obviously we're, we're getting into the office, uploading the video, downloading our opponents. Um, so that way, come Sunday morning, we have an opportunity to be able to jump right in and uh, watch some video, be able to start grading it. You know, usually for me, I get up in the morning and, and try to watch it through. I may not grade it by that time, but I might watch it through once. Um, then we come in uh, together as a staff. Um, usually we, we uh, spend a little bit of time, you know, separately. Um, we come together, we go over, you know, some of the things from the game, like participation reports, all this little paperwork stuff. And uh, then kind of divide up into offense and defense and kind of go over what we saw, what we thought, uh, and that sort of thing. And then, and then get ourselves ready for meetings, uh, go over the film with our players. So we do kind of a lifting day as well on Sundays. Um, and then we usually get out for a, a short little flush run practice, um, going to, over some things. And, and this week was a little different. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a young man that uh, had to head up to the hospital and, and get some work done on his leg. So I, I spent my afternoon uh, with him and his mom in the hospital and, and Coach Davis and, and Coach Mendez and Coach Coombs kind of ran everything. So, I, you know, really I can't tell you what happened after, you know, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, they could have been, you know, eating bonbons and, you know, drinking diet, diet soda for all I know. I'm pretty sure that they were working on things because the guys were really tired once I got there at the end of running. I would say that knowing just what I know from these two, that Von Boss probably are not going to be on the list uh, or uh, taking it easy on the place. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think so either. I think they were in pretty good hands. You know, they were in really good hands. Coach Mendez, offensively, what, how do you prepare for the next game? Do you, and do you sit down with other coaches and kind of look over and, 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 and put together a plan? Yeah, well, first of all, I would be just like Peggy Bundy and demolish the bonbons if they were available. A nice little reference for us that are older. But, um, yeah, uh, definitely just like Coach K said, we sit down together as an offensive staff. Um, watch watch our previous film, talk about what we need to get better at, what we're still working on, then go into the next week's opponent and try to get together a, a game plan and what, what we think we do well, what we think um, other people have done well against them, and maybe something that fits into our scheme. Um, that kind of all goes together. Coach Davis, yourself, uh, you get the film, you break it down, you take a look. Do you try to compare it to what was done in, in the past year, just the past week? And then do you, do you conference with anybody? It's kind of just you and maybe Coons. Yeah, so uh, we have four defensive coaches on our staff that kind of break down all of an area. Uh, I do formations and motions and play efficiency, and we have a coach that does the pass plays and a coach that does the pass protection and a coach that does the run game. They kind of all own their areas, and uh, we'll break down three games. Generally, I'll also break down the game we played against them last year since I wasn't the coordinator. I just watched that game. You kind of see matchups like – um, you know, did they return four offensive linemen? We had similar D linemen last year. What did they do well? Maybe we can do similar things. Uh, were there receivers? You know, how did we cover them last year? What did their quarterback look like? So I'll watch some of that stuff as we transition in the next year. Then we'll include the previous games. I think as a defensive coordinator, especially if you get beat, that offensive coordinator is going to come back and do very similar things as what he did last year, and he may not be doing the same things because he's playing against these different defenses. So uh, we'll break those down uh, that week. This week it was 206 plays, and we set from 1 o'clock on Monday afternoon till 6 o'clock as our whole staff watched them together. We have two graduate assistants, and I think it's very important that they're in there and they're learning as much as possible. One's a defensive backs coach, one coaches our linebackers, so we're teaching them about D-line play and linebacker play, so the goal is when they get done here that they can go on and be a super successful coach and uh, we can get them a full-time job. So when you guys get together and you talk about different things, 
Are you judge, jury, and executioner, Coach K, when it comes to everything? Or do you guys kind of have a say and do some different things or point something out that maybe somebody's missing? Well, generally, generally what we do is uh, we get to each each week and we determine how we want to approach practice um, that we, you know, so for example, uh, you know, the suggestion that um, one of our coaches made last, before last week is that uh, we take our Friday practice and we move it to the morning because it's just an hour. It gives our guys more time to rest. Um, before the game coming up, and then it allows, you know, from a coaching standpoint, it allows our coaches to make sure that we're getting out to high school games to be in the area to be able to watch games and evaluate kids and, and move into our recruiting stuff. And so what we try to do is we try to go over and say, all right, what do we need? What do we need to get accomplished within practices? Do we need to switch things up? Um, you know, this week, last week we did a, a competition where where we had each one of the position groups was – where they were they were running, so a little conditioning, but they were sprinting against each other. So all the quarterbacks ran against each other. So they were competing within their group, um, and that sort of deal. Uh, this week uh, we did um, today we did a sudden change drill. Um, so we uh, all of a sudden we get done with stretch, and our kids they don't pay attention to our practice plans or anything like that, so they don't know anything coming along. I just blew the whistle. I put the ball down. I said, first offense, first defense, one play, sudden change. And uh, we ran the play. And so that then at that point, you know, usually what happens is our second group goes, okay, it's our turn to run sudden change. So we totally threw a curveball at them, and we put the young guys out there. We put all of our young guys out there the next play. So the guys that have been, you know, been, you know, getting drills and work, that sort of thing, they got a chance to – show what they could do, offense versus defense, and uh, compete. So so that was the thing that we decided to do. We, we switched one day where we wanted to do um, an inside drill. We made that um, like on a Tuesday instead of on a Wednesday. And so we'll just figure out, like last week, um, basically going against each other in any kind of fashion was not going to be good for either side of the ball because – Really, you know, defensively, they needed to work triple option, triple option, triple option, triple option. So basically, offensive defense stay, stay separate for the whole entire week. This week, we'll, we'll try to do some more. We did an inside run drill today um, where it was our offense running against our defense because, you know, our defense can get in the three man front, get in the four man front. Um, you know, and that's what uh, Tabor's going to run. They're going to run more of them on front, but they can get into some three. They shift. Um, personnel packages, we can put a tight end. We can put two backs. We can put, you know, four wide. We can do a little bit more things this week together. So that's where we usually sit at the beginning of the week and say, all right, what do we want to get accomplished? What do we want to work on? Nick, what do you need? Julian, what do you need? And then using the years and years of uh, organizational experience, Right. Um, I try to help them put together a practice plan that I think is beneficial to them. And then we also have Chris Kidd for uh, special teams. Still have the hair? Oh, yeah, definitely. Chris so, Kidd definitely has the uh, blowing box. He has not shaved it. Nope. No, no. It is. We're working on it. We discussed it in the uh, in pregame last week that had the Braves won. He was going to get his head shaved here, but I think the health department might frown upon that. I definitely don't think that's going to be allowed. <laughs> but then we would have to figure out a place where it would happen. But, uh, he, he was all for it, so we, we know it's there. It's an option on the table, and maybe just throw it out there with players, too. That is his commitment to, to the success of the Braves football club. That is his commitment. So you got I got to buy in. He bought in 110%. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to buy in right now by taking a break. All right. It was a nice thing. That's the process. Okay. So we're going to take a break right here. When we come back, we're going to discuss this weekend's matchup with the Tabor Blue Jays as they come to town. Uh, one of my uh, favorite rivalries, as always, because their fan base loves me. And uh, I love them, too. So, uh, don't forget, we're here till 8 o'clock at Primetime Grill, 2204 South Prince Circle Drive, South Island. But did you know there's a bowling alley here? Fusion Alley, good, clean, fun. 
They have bowling leagues. They have open bowling. 242-B-O-W-L or Fusion Alley Ottawa.com. You're listening to the Kent Kessinger Show on KLFO.com. Tired of the same boring burgers from yet another national chain? Break that chain with a visit to Ottawa's locally owned and operated Primetime Grill. What have they got? How about eight kinds of salad for lunches that are light on calories and loaded with flavor? Maybe you'd like a big, crispy platter of fish and chips. Hot wings? Pork loin. Of course, if you still want that burger, you can choose from seven mouth-watering options. Primetime Grill. What are you in the mood for? 132 conference championships, 146 NAIA scholar teams, 43 NAIA national tournament appearances, and 237 All-Americans. Ottawa University has a long and rich tradition of Braves athletes that continue to compete at the highest level of competition, utilizing state-of-the-art facilities, accomplished coaches, and a spirit that only comes from wearing the black and gold. Push yourself to limits you never imagined as a student athlete at Ottawa University. Visit ottawa.edu slash OUK. Yes. Hi, I'm Laura Howard, Secretary of the Kansas Department for Aging and Disability Services. In Kansas, there are more than 540,000 people on Medicare, and each day, nearly 10,000 new people enroll nationwide. While Medicare enrollment can seem daunting, it doesn't have to be. That's where SHIC, or the Senior Health Insurance Counseling for Kansas program, comes in. The SHIC program provides seniors across Kansas trusted and unbiased help about Medicare benefits. SHIC counselors provide Provide all the information and options available so you can make an informed decision about your Medicare coverage. We look forward to helping you navigate your way to a Medicare plan that is right for you. The number to call to find your local SHIP counselor is 1-800-860-5260. Sponsored by the Kansas Department for Aging and Disability Services and Administration for Community Living, Department of Health and Human Services, and aired in cooperation with this station. What's your favorite high school sports memory? A late inning rally? A game winning shot? A photo finish? Maybe it's a pep rally or a pregame ritual. Maybe it's the euphoria of a late night bus ride home after a hard fought win. Maybe it's having pizza with teammates after the game. Now, imagine if it never happened at all. School sports need your help. With budgets getting tighter, it's more than the games that are on the line. It's all the traditions, the community pride, the culture of your hometown high school, plus all those memories that are on the line, too. What can you do? It's simple. Buy a ticket when you can. Go to a game. Take the whole family. Let's do everything we can to keep those cherished school sports memories alive. This message presented by the Kansas State High School Activities Association and the Kansas Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association. Time Grill. Uh, here until the top of the hour. I know last week I promised a uh, homework call, but because of the switch to internet only tonight, we're going to have to defer to next week. So, but I I have found four clips that may be may be all time. I'm not sure. So you've done your homework. I, I did my homework. I was I was ready to go. Really? Although the conference has made it even difficult this year by putting everything behind a payroll wall to uh, um, be able to access, you know, if you want to download it. And so it's made it made it a little difficult, but I had my way and I was able to get some things together. But yes, so. Uh, so next week we will have home call. We will revert back to four questions this week. A, uh, just because, you know, really that's about the best thing to do with no sound effects or anything else. That's what we're doing. So, and I said so. That's why. Uh, 
Yeah, sounds good to me. All right. Oh, let's say hello to everybody while we think about it. This is probably the earliest we've done it so far this year. It is. It is. We're just at the bottom part of the hour. Yeah. So hello, Amy. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, the show is so far so far. Uh, we've really, but I think maybe we could maybe a test some audio for this out. That's good. Good so, to hear. So, but uh, so far is uh, where I usually rate. So if, it's not, if it doesn't stay below that, we're in good shape. So, um, hello to the Grogans. Grogans. The Millers. The Millers. Yep. God bless the moving east and, yep. uh, and being closer to the action. Mother in law, early. Yes. And your mom and your aunt. Who probably are asleep, but we'll all find out tomorrow. Okay. Because usually then they. Wow. If I say something stupid, they'll tell me. Ah. So you know, I don't have to worry about you guys telling me that I said something stupid. I have my own mother. Doing that, okay. So, so don't worry. Oh, good. That's a, that's a burden off of our shoulders. Oh, yeah. it's definitely a burden off. Of I can tell. I can tell. Um, we got, uh, you know, I think Chris Davis is why yeah, Heather and Scout Nanny. Yeah, you know, Lisa, the dog. Dog. Yeah. dog. Hello to hello to them. Um, I believe Coach Mendez's wife is probably out, you know, from some kind of athletic event or something like that. She's she's quite the still the athlete. Uh, she likes to still do so she may be looking. She might have left the radio on yeah. and she's listening to the volleyball yeah. game now for, the, for years. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Obviously, so. Hello to Sam, and then Zeus and Hercules, if they're paying attention at home, somebody should have turned the radio off. Well, I've already been informed that my yeah, wife is Hercules. <laughs> yeah, Zeus and Hercules. So we got Zeus and Hercules, and we got Andy and who? Scout. Scout. And I have uh, Oswald and Rush. Yeah. Well, I've got to have to go to Kenneth has the most intimidating you know, of the animals. Could be Lee Harvey, though. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we won't throw that out there. Annie Oakley, for sure. But Annie Oakley. Yeah. yeah. Scout, as in from uh, uh, football scout. So oh, NFL. Scout, yeah. Okay. Todd Mache, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was maybe Bruce Willis. You know, yeah. you're a big fan of Bruce Willis. His name is a scout. Say hello to your father. Yeah, dad, mom. Dad, dad, mom, listening. Think, baby. I don't know. It's on. It's just online. And star nine. Unless Amy got upset. Well, if, if so, hello to them. Still, my one of my all-time favorite episodes last year when they had your father on. So. Called in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm gonna have to sneak him up in the booth for halftime or something. Yeah. He would prefer probably to be in the booth. Yeah. Someplace. Yeah. Yeah. VIP section or something like that. I could always use a telegraph. Well, I don't know. Vision wise, <laughs> it's not like my idea. You can tell him what's going on, and he would be able to give you his opinion. <laughs> so, taste this week, Tigger is uh, coming off of a, a loss, and a sterling. By the way, I got a question before we even go any further. I'm looking through here, trying to find some nuggets, some questions to ask, I'm looking at Tabor's stats. It says that they were 3 of 4 in the red zone with three red zone touchdowns, but points to the red zone, six. How does that work? That might be the season stat. Oh, no, this is from the Brent. Uh, yeah, it's the new statistical package that we have, I think. Okay. Because okay. I think they're working the bug out of it right now. Okay. Right now, I think it's, you know, in the computer world that I'm not, you know, too knowledgeable about, I will call it the data. So this is not even a full 1.0 release. Well, it, it probably is. It's going to be a data for the learning curve, right? Okay. Because uh, I, mean, I know I'm not the smartest individual on the planet. But that certainly didn't add up in my day. Right. But the live stream is yes. pretty solid. Yes. yes, it is. Pretty solid. Absolutely. Right. And Sabre's offense was pretty solid last week. I think the defense may have been the question mark. But 
the one thing that threw me off looking at that, and it also could be because they were down by a bajillion at one point in time, uh, especially at the half, they threw the ball a lot. And that's a little bit different than what we would normally see. Yeah, you know, Chris Davis probably can talk a little bit more about that one, but what I've noticed is I think they're trying to be balanced, but they're getting behind the game, so I think that that's causing them to fall forward and normal. You know, you know, over the years, they've, they've done all different types of offense. They've been, even with Coach Gardner, I mean, they've gone from being a spread team to a zone team to a triple option team, you know, back to a running, you know, power team to um, spread it out. Of so, um, they've had a variety of different offenses. Coach Davis? Yeah, I think there's a combination of they want to be more balanced than maybe what they've had or what they did at least last year. So I think they had a D lineman playing quarterback in the game we played them last year uh, because of some injuries. Uh, but, you know, they were down big against Savlo, they were down big against Sterling, and they threw the ball. And they were actually pretty successful uh, throwing once they were down. So I don't know if because they were down by such a large amount that those defenses kind of played a little softer because they knew that they – we're in pretty good shape to win the game, so they let them have some passes underneath, which may make the statistics look a little bit better. Uh, better. But uh, I think they're pretty solid on offense. They have a good rushing attack, and they have really good weapons. They're young, and uh, their quarterback has been pretty efficient with the football. He's got seven touchdowns and only thrown uh, one interception on the season. Coach Mendez, offensively for Ottawa, where do you see opportunity to take advantage of this Blue Jays? Um, I mean, first and foremost, we have to be able to play a full game offensively and get our stuff moving. Um, but their defense, I mean, to give the credit to their defense, uh, this last week they started to figure it out against early and they do some things um, to show some bright spots. I hope they don't figure it out when they come into play up. But I, I think they were able to do it because they're coached very well and coached very hard, obviously. It's always with Coach Gardner over there, he's going to be leading. But we're, we have to be able to make adjustments and be able to stay within our scheme and, and finally put it together for an auto university offer. Absolutely. We're nowhere with that. I appreciate that. That was great. Thanks. As always. Did, did you teach courses on media at home? Okay. This just came natural? I, you know, one thing I know Tabor is pretty solid against the I, I noticed it up front, and in like Joe Smith is saying, they're, they're, they got some views for the bottom. They got some bottom. They got some huge We have, we have 
we have four good opponents, and they were a good opponent, but we match up better than we did maybe in the game. And we have to take it as an opportunity that this is, the, this is now a time that we need to put our best foot forward and, and start moving forward in the direction that, that we should be able to go. We have, we have managed to somehow survive without um, having too many injuries, um, but we also need to get ourselves down to take long time. And, and we should be able to do that. We're going to take our final break right here. When we come back, we're going to play for questions. More about the favorite game. Might have some jazz. Who knows? You never know what's going to happen here. Smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. Uh, so it's all that and more here on the Kim Kessinger Show, live from Prime Time Grill at 2204 South Princeton Social Drive in South Ottawa. You're listening to us on KOLFO.com. Combination of food, fun, and football. The Kent Kessinger Show, Tuesday nights at Primetime Grill. And that combination just got even better because now you can enjoy the show while you enjoy a blast from the past. Poncho Super Cheese or Super Chili and Cheese Burrito. That's right, Poncho Super Cheese or Super Chili and Cheese Burritos are back. And they're only at Primetime Grill on Tuesdays. Enjoy all of your other menu favorites. Kind of like you guys are underwater talking to a soap can. I don't know what a soap can is, but. So we're like doing the. For student populations, for lifetimes of enlightened faith, exemplary service, inspired leadership, and personal significance. With numerous undergraduate and graduate degrees in business, education, arts and sciences, athletics, and more, you'll gain the specific expertise you need for a lifetime of significance and prosperity. Find out more by visiting ottawa.edu slash O-U-K-S. Franklin County Emergency Communications Center, Franklin County Sheriff's Office, Ottawa Police Department, and Wellsville Police Department would like to invite you to protect yourself from scams and fraud. No law enforcement agency or government entity will ever call to tell you that you have a warrant. No legitimate business or government entity will accept gift cards as payment for anything including fees, bonds, or taxes. Consider it a scam if someone you don't know is asking you to purchase a gift card and never give out any personal information. When it comes to being scammed, it is only appropriate to call law enforcement to report when you have lost property, money, or your identity has been stolen. Don't underestimate what scammers will do and say to you in order to get your information or money. When making online purchases, use caution, even when using trusted buyers or sellers. Use public parking lots or highly visible locations to exchange goods and use verified secure digital currency exchanges. Protect personal information. The identity saved could be your own. Brought to you by the Franklin County Emergency Communications Center and KOFO Radio. You're invited to the Old Mary's Chili Cook-Off Saturday. Presented by KOFO and Peckham's Pumpkin Patch. With assistance from Gardner Disposal, Bones Rockyard, and Pleasant Ridge Farms. Proceeds benefit the Franklin County Cancer Foundation. There'll be fun activities for the entire family starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. Ride the hay wagon down the hill to the pumpkin patch and test your sense of direction in the hay maze. Kids can conquer the climbing hill or try their luck at the new Clinko game. There's a whole lot more, but we can't describe it all in 60 seconds, so come on out and see it in person. Your $6.50 paid admission lets you vote for your favorite chili and enjoy all the activities. Kids for and under, get in free. Walk-ups are welcome, but you can save 50 cents per ticket when you purchase online at PleasantRidge.com. For the Old Mary's Chili Cook-Off, brought to you by Peckham's Pumpkin Patch and KOFO. Final segment here of uh, the show on KOFO.com. Next week we will be back on the mothership. Well, one on 103.7 FM KOFO and also on KOFO.com. Don't forget Saturday we will be on the air starting the free game at noon. Kickoff is at 1 at uh, University in Taylorville. Get it on! Did you like that? that was, I like that. It was Enthusiasm behind enthusiasm right there at Advent Health Field. And uh, by the way, weather could be a little rainy. 
So it's going to definitely Great. be important to hold on to the rock as much as possible. Yep. And not drop that all over the place. Uh, but hey, you know, they can fumble it to. At least it's not going to look like that cheap bus game from the 70s or the early 70s. It looks like there's a high thunderstorm. So, will you guys join me if we get into a weather delay? <laughs> I want to play. We're leading the country in tumbling. There, there we go. That's a positive. There's a positive right there. And why not? Well, I mean, you're going to play. It just might be a seven-hour game. Yeah, you know. It's just rain. Rain is... Oh, rain. Oh, rain's fine. It's got uh, thunder, lightning. Yeah. One of my favorite games here is Auto University. Mm -hmm. is oh, now I've been played in a mist. Double overtime against the first. Yes. In a mist. That was really cool. It was uh, very European. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't know that. that. You know, the ice stump is right there. Yeah. That was pretty cool. I mean, I've been to Ireland. It is rain. So, are you guys ready for full questions? This is, uh, They're on the edge of their seat. Yeah, I mean, if we had video here, man. Look, I, I don't know if I would go that far, but maybe the close to yeah. They're leaning forward, ready to go. They're paying attention. All right. Well, first of all, why does hot weather suck? Okay? I, I need an answer. Is this one of the four questions? This is one of the four questions. Humid or just hot? Well, since we're here and it's generally hot and humid, we're going to go with both. I would, my wife, she would say that she does not like that because that would bring tornadoes and she's definitely afraid of tornadoes on a humid night here in Kansas. Okay. okay. Uh, I think it sucks because then uh, my wife has turned down the AC to a brisk. 54 degrees, and then my bill races extensively. See that? There, that right there is the answer. Well, we don't have that problem with Kevin Costco because it's been at 79. <laughs> yeah. But there's a battle in my household, and I, I like to keep it at about 77 just because of that whole electric bill thing, but there's others who disagree. And then you open the windows up and away. Uh, every once in a while. Every yeah. once in a while. Uh, question number two. Worst quarterback mismanagement this year? Chicago Bears, Miami Dolphins. Uh, I'm going to have to tap out of that one. I have watched no professionals. Oh. Uh, I will go. You say the Bears because they should have started fields from the beginning? Or, I mean, the Dolphins have an injury, so both are injured. Back of half to play, so I'm going to go a wash there, Bob. Okay. okay. I'm just going to go ahead and say the Bears because. Okay. I, I, will, I would have said Tua and, and the Dolphins just because it's Tua and the Dolphins. But um, that's just me. Um, okay. So, you know, like they have all the impossible meat, right? You know, her, the, 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 the her, her. So my question is, is impossible pork kosher? Is it considered kosher? Yes. Is it not real pork? Okay. Yes, so you don't have to worry about how it's prepared. Because that's the whole idea of kosher. Okay. I would take it. Okay. Excellent. All right. So better athlete. Because Mendez or his wife? His wife. 
overall athleticism? Yeah. Or yeah, we'll go overall. Or just, you know, ability and accolades. Yeah. We're, we're going to go overall. It's just everything. It encompasses everything. Who scares me more? <laughs> His wife. His wife. <laughs> Sam, if you're listening, I choose you because you scare me. As I will answer the question as who scares me more as well, she does. But as the fact that I don't even get asked by my own family members to play in most of the tournaments that she does, even though they're all male tournaments, and she still gets to play in a little rough life. The rest of the family? Yeah, we're very close. Yeah, that's, that's right. Coach uh, Davis? Yeah, I'm going to go with Sam on that one. But a few sports, I think Coach Mendez, he'd be an excellent uh, racquetball. He'd be a great goalie in hockey for curling is a sport. Well, wasn't Martin Gino you know, played a, 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 a very uh, good game of racquetball? So is this a, is this a bad joke, guys? Is this what we're going at? Was this, was I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, that was uh, in his presser when he was hired. And uh, I think people brought it up. He, he was quick size. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what Coach Mendez. That's why. Yeah. Coach Mendez has got good size. Yeah. Yeah. That's all that. Yeah. Front middle. Yep. Yeah. Front middle. Yeah. You can play front middle. Take, right. take away everybody else's athletic ability. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm Paul Turney here on 103.7 FM KOFO and KOFA.com. It's going to wrap up this week for the Kid Kessinger Show live from Primetime Grill. We'll talk to you again next Tuesday night. Thanks for listening on KOFO.com.